Oh, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. I was thinking we could do a Dr. Doolittle movie. Oh, yeah, tap into that pre existing Doolittle fan base. Oh, yeah, we're going to get that Doolittle I'm money. So surprised there I haven't watched this. Fans out there. Die wow, wow, fans. wow. And we're also going to get that Marvel money. What? What do you mean? Well, I managed to get Robert Downey Jr. to agree to have this be his first post Marvel yep. movie. Oh, wow. How'd you manage that? I told him you'd give him $20 million and a cut of the box office returns. Oh, kind of wish you asked me first. <laughs> I also convinced a bunch of celebrities to come voice the animals by promising them a bunch of my money. By promising them a bunch of your money. <laughs> Sounds kind of expensive. A bunch of my like money. the budget's really going to add up. Well, yeah, but we're going to have Robert Downey Jr. in celebrity voices. People are going to flock to the theaters. Oh, he <laughs> is very likable. It'll be cool to see him do that charming Tony Stark thing. Actually, no, he's not going to do nope. that. Oh, he's not. Now, he wants to make sure that this is very different from Tony Stark, so he's going to kind of, you know, clench his jaw and mumble a Welsh accent to himself. Sounds hard to understand. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Can he do a Welsh <laughs> sure. accent? I don't think, no, not really. Wow, so what are some of the animals going to be? Well, there's going to be a polar bear who's always cold, which is ironic and therefore good writing. Oh, he's going to voice therefore. him. I have his head shot right here. Oh, John Cena, that's a great picture. Yeah, and I also thought we could get Randy <laughs> Malek to voice a gorilla who's scared of things. Did he tell me anything else about the character? I can't, because that's all. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's also going to be a fox in like two scenes, and she's going to be like, vive la résistance. Why would a fox say that? Well, because she's going to be voiced by Marion Cotillard. Oh, and she's French. Yes. She is, so her character is going to say a famous French phrase with seemingly no context. <laughs> that works for me. There's also going to be a cute little squirrel, but with Craig Robinson doing uh -huh. an angry voice. Oh, a cute little animal with an angry voice. How'd you think of that? Well, I was inspired by, uh, you know, every kid's movie ever. I love it. We're also going to have a parrot voiced by Emma Thompson, and she's going to narrate <clears throat> this thing. What kind of narration are we talking? Well, sometimes I forgot to explain important story elements in actual scenes, so I just have a parrot fill in the blanks yep. while we show CGI landscapes. So there is a story? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Maybe a little. Sure. Well, what happens in this thing? Well, Dr. Doolittle's wife dies, so he becomes a recluse for like seven years. Okay. But then the queen gets poisoned, and if she dies, he loses his house or something. So what does he do? Well, he has to travel to this mythical island, because right. there's a flower there that's the only thing that can cure her. If the island's a myth, how does he know the flower is a cure? I don't know. <laughs> so he just takes a off on a question. boat with his animals and this kid, Tommy, that wants to be his apprentice. Oh, Tommy, what's his deal? Well, he spends most of the movie looking at animals like this. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, sure, and, and, and that's it? Well, also, just by <laughs> hanging out with the animals, he starts to understand their languages, too, Somehow. just like Doolittle. Wait, so this isn't just some ability that Doolittle has. It's something that can be learned <laughs> by listening to animals? That's right. So he's like, hey, when the bees go, bzz, that means this, right? And when the bear says this, that means that. So so each animal has a different language. Yeah, sure, that seems to be what I wrote here. <laughs> so so, so how can the be. animals speak to each other, and how can Doolittle speak to more than one species okay. at a time? Oh, well, actually, I'm going to need you to get all the way off my back about how the animal languages work. <laughs> oh, okay, let me get off of that thing. So anyway, the good guys are being chased <laughs> by this bad guy, Muff. I, I like how he brings that up, because it, it didn't make much sense. The fact that the kid could learn it, it kind of belittled Doolittle's ability after a while. So I was like, oh, this he's not as special as you thought he was, I guess. Fly, right? Okay. And so his ship is getting real close to theirs, so Doolittle uses whales to make his ship go faster. Mm -hmm. Is this like a whale that he knows? I guess so. Yeah, sure. I don't care. <laughs> well, okay, then. So then the pirate informs us that they're actually going to this pirate <laughs> island now. Back. How come? Because Doolittle's wife has a journal there that has instructions in it's it or something. Forever. I don't care. <laughs> okay, but this pirate been island is ruled I've heard by the wife's dad, Antonio Banderas, <laughs> who, by the way, was very interested in the project. Oh. Sorry, the paycheck. <laughs> and he blames Doolittle for his daughter's death. Death, so Doolittle has to be super sneaky. Oh what God. does he do? Well, he actually used to live on this island or something, so he reconnects or with something. a dragonfly he knows. Didn't you say that Doolittle stayed at home for like seven years after his wife died? That's right. And isn't the lifespan of a dragonfly like six months? Well, here's <laughs> the thing about insects and animals. I did no research on them whatsoever. <laughs> sure seems that way. So then an ant makes a reference to the Godfather, which is going to appeal to somebody in the audience, maybe. Sure. Wow, well, yeah, who is that for? <laughs> I don't know. The animals just kind of say things, sometimes in reference to movies. The Duck makes a rush hour reference. Oh, it does. Yeah, it's like, do you understand the words that are coming out of my bill? Oh, a very fun play <laughs> on the 1998 Chris Tucker movie quote. So eventually, Doolittle gets thrown in this cell with this angry tiger that wants to oh eat him. Oh, so what does he do? Well, he uses a mirror to reflect light, almost like a laser pointer, so it gets distracted like a cat. Like oh, that's kitty actually cat. clever, you know, using something relating to cats to disable the big cat. And then the gorilla busts in and kicks the tiger in the nuts and chokes him out. Oh my god, okay, never mind. So they're all 
gonna go to this other island. There's a dragon there. Oh, a dragon. There are mythical creatures now. Yeah. There are mythical creatures. It was weird. Now. Well, okay then. So then this dragon straight up like kills and devours a bunch of bad yep. guys. Oh my god. And that mudfly guy falls off a cliff. Oh, and so he's just done. That story's over. It's just over. So then the good guys are like, oh, we're gonna have to deal with this frickin' dragon. Is that gonna be hard to do? Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Oh my god. Barely an inconvenience. Oh really? Yeah, Doctor Doolittle pulls some bagpipes out of its butthole. <laughs> does what? What does he do? Well, the dragon had a Doctor Doolittle pulls some bagpipes out of its butthole. What? He does what? What does he do? Well, the dragon had a very clogged butthole. So Doolittle pulls some bagpipes out of it. Oh, dragon buttholes are tight. Not particularly. No, they're just some large objects. In there. So then what happens? The longest fart you can oh imagine. Oh my god. And farts are hilarious. So this is just going to be a great piece of cinema. This is like the climax cinema. of the film. Pretty much. Yeah. The whole movie's been building to them getting to this point. That's true. So yeah. Wow, 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 wow. And then the dragon turns to Doolittle, like, now I'm gonna help you. <laughs> uh, is the dragon gonna do something to his butthole now? No, she's gonna lead him to the magic plant he's looking for. Oh, okay, good. And then the John Cena polar bear says, teamwork makes dreams work. Oh, that does sound like what a polar bear would say after seeing a man pull bagpipes out of a dragon's clogged brain. <laughs> well, let me just say, not only do I think there's nothing wrong with that scene, I'd like to pay a bunch of money to bring it to the <laughs> so you like the movie. Well, I mean, we have Tony Stark, we have a bunch of celebrities oh voicing animals, some of which have characteristics i'd feel Some comfortable dropping like 175 mil on this oh thing you won't regret it sir mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. just terrible just terrible and i'm sorry i thought i had seen this one before and apparently i was wrong saja man swedish viking this is for you you were asking for the face-off pitch meeting you were also asking for the do little pitch meeting as far as reactions i've already done the face-off one that was a uh, pitch meeting versus honest trailer reaction from a while back. Check that out up here. But I thought I had seen this one. And I'm remembering I saw the movie. I did watch the movie. The movie was horrible. It was really bad. It was very boring. There was even somebody that fell asleep and was snoring very loudly. I remember that. But uh, I thought I saw the pitch meeting. Now I'm realizing I have not. This was a four-year-old pitch meeting. But a very good one. Uh, I love that the I Don't Care came up multiple times in this one. And uh, and then just how the whole movie, as far as the climax of the film, was just leading. It was leading to this super long fart because he took out some bagpipes from the dragon's butthole. Uh, <laughs> it's like, what are we doing here? Also, the fact that this had mythological creatures. It, it was weird as far as the, the, the t not the time frame necessarily, but the realism of it. Like, oh, we're going for more realism? Or are we going for this whole mythological thing? Then you had like this whole pirate type thing going on with Antonio Banderas' character. It was just weird. It was very weird. Uh, so it, 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 it didn't work. Clearly, it didn't work. And now Robert Downey Jr. is back. Um, after winning an Oscar, he did win an Oscar for Oppenheimer. So he did that. But now he's back in the MCU, which I, I knew was going to happen at some point because his track record outside of the MCU was not that great. Oppenheimer, as far as what he did there, that's the, like the one thing he's done recently where, where it was like, oh, yeah. He's back. He's got some other things in the pipeline, but I knew he'd come back. I knew it. So if you didn't know he's coming back, he's going to be Doomsday in, uh, <laughs> in an Avengers movie. So that's happening. But funny one from Ryan George here. Again, it's been a long time on this one. I thought I watched it, and I have not. Now I'm checking it out here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on this pitch meeting. Thanks for laughing with me, though. Thanks for watching with me. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe. Check out the description for the original video here. Subscribe to Pitch Meetings and to Ryan George's channel if you haven't done that yet. He's got a lot of funny videos over there. A lot that we, we've reacted to here, but you need to make sure you're showing him some love. Also, check out the description if you want to see more information on the equipment or anything I do here as far as making content, being a content creator, all that jazz. Check that out down below. You won't regret it. And as always, I will see you guys on the next video. Take care.